What are you doing, man? I'm doing my prep. But how are you gonna, you know? Uh... Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. This week, we are taking a trip down under to explore the impact of one of the most prevalent preventative procedures today, a colonoscopy, and its effects on our oh, 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 so cherished friends, our gut buddies, our microbiota, our, our microbes. And this has been a subject of interest for me in particular ever since, well, I had to get one. And the fact that I could be potentially wiping out the forest of microbes that I've been nourishing for so many years was absolutely killing me. And if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you probably know that I am an absolute microbiome groupie. I am drinking the Kool-Aid. I am on the tour van, fully bought into the profound impacts that it has on our everyday and long-term health. So I figured let's spend today looking into some research on the topic, the screening options, and what you can do to put yourself in the very best position to support your microbes through this trying time. Oh, and I'll tell you about a little secret weapon that might be our saving grace through all of this. I real love secrets. And I wanna give fair warning. This might get a little stinky. So first off, if you're unfamiliar with the microbiome or you just need a little refresher, take a look at this overarching review I did a few months back. It will fill you in on why it is absolutely critical for health in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way, of course. You can check it out in the cards up here or also in the links below. But for the context of this video, at the highest, highest level, our gut microbiome is the communities of trillions of bacteria that live in and populate our gut, primarily our large intestines, AKA our colon. So starting the deep dive, let's first talk about why we actually do this procedure. Why do we do a colonoscopy in the first place? And on this channel, you've heard me say what I'm about to say numerous times, but I'm gonna say it once more. When we're talking health and longevity, prevention is always, always, always easier than reversal. Let me say that again, because of course I was lying when I told you I would only say it once. I can't help it. If you want to live a long, prosperous, healthy life, you should be focused on disease prevention rather than dealing with the difficult, complicated, debilitating challenge of management and reversal. Your goal as the owner of your health should be health creation and management, not I'll deal with it when it happens. Because if you're thinking that way, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Tough love is the best love. Anyway, all that is why this is such a interesting topic of exploration, because colonoscopies are a prevention activity. And that's good. And with colon cancer being the third most prevalent cancer across the globe, and a pretty treatable one when caught early, this is something we need to be all over. But in doing so, we wanna make sure we don't open ourselves up to any detrimental side effects, right? Right, thanks for answering. So let's talk PrEP and the potential problems with PrEP. Now there are a few different PrEP solutions on the market, but the gist of it is, whatever one you're prescribed has one job and one job only. Gentlemen, let's plow the road. Yeah, because the last thing anybody wants is waking up after a procedure and hearing the prep didn't work and we'll see you in two weeks. Trust me. So the prep is built and prescribed to clear the way, literally. And by now I'm sure you put two and two together and I don't get how that's even a phrase because it doesn't really make sense but we'll go with it, two and two together, by saying in this all-encompassing flush of the system, what happens to the white picket fences and lovely yards of the community of microbes that call that place home? I mean, surely they're impacted. Surely they're impacted. <laughs> surely they're impacted. It's just a matter of how much 
and if they could recover or not. So let's take a look at the research. When we dive into the scientific literature, there have been a number of studies that have been published over the years. But I'll say this here and now, we definitely need more to fully understand this very complex and complicated topic that is just so, so, so critical to human health. Many of the studies, as you can imagine, have small sample sizes, but the majority show rather similar results. Results that typically show that there is a large impact to your gut microbe density and populations immediately following the prep, AKA the big flush. This right here shouldn't be a big surprise. But what many have also shown is a near recovery to pre-prep baselines around 14 days post procedure, which is an awesome thing. Now, whether your pre-prep microbiota was a health promoting one is a totally different subject. What I will say is many living a Western lifestyle, eating a standard processed food Western diet, the answer is no. And that right there most likely is part of the problem with the prevalence and uprise of Western disease. But a topic for another day. Let's stick with the research and look into a recent 2019 study published in the journal Scientific Reports. This study took a look in the change in diversity in the gut microbiome and the metabolome or the health critical metabolites that are produced by our gut buddies, assessing how both recovered after the standard prep. The study found when compared to the control group, microbiota diversity was significantly decreased immediately after the prep, but not when checked 14 days after, indicating a recovery. As for the metabolites, 32 were significantly altered before and immediately after the prep. But along with the gut microbe diversity, the metabolites showed a drastic recovery 14 days after as well. This study concluded that the standard prep did in fact have a profound impact on the microbiome and metabolome, but overall compositions recovered to baseline about 14 days after. Now, real quick, I know you've been waiting for this the whole time. Remember that secret? Let's talk about it. Now, let me preface it with this. This is evolutionary theory, not fact. Theory, not fact. Just wanna state that up front so we're on the same page here. There are hypotheses out there that the reason that this recovery or any gut recovery is possible is because we have this little Pandora, a safe haven, if you will. It's thought that this safe haven slash bunker is a little pocket that hangs off our large intestines and is looked down on by all the other popular organs, if our organs were in high school. The appendix. This often classified useless organ is speculated by some of the forward thinkers in the field as an evolutionary protective mechanism, a place where the critical microbes could bunker up and weather the storm in times where a full flush was necessary. How do you think we dealt with food poisoning 100,000 years ago? Again, this is theory, but I will say, it becomes more and more evident each and every day that Things just don't make their way through evolution by mistake. Pretty interesting, right? Now, finally, after all that, what options do you have when it comes to screenings and how can you put yourself in the best possible position to support your microbes? First, the only way you can really guarantee that the internal plumbing is healthy is by getting this procedure done. There are, however, new and innovative ways that are making their way into the market that can give you a reading with a pretty high probability the top one being a pharmacological grade at home test kit that samples your microbial DNA and RNA that provides a 90% and above accuracy for screening colon cancer. Not too shabby. But if you are going for the full fledged procedure, here's some things to keep in mind. First, if you are using any broad spectrum antibiotics, I would take a hard look at potentially delaying the procedure until you are fully off them. And here's why. Antibiotics, especially broad spectrum antibiotics, wipe out both your good and your bad gut bugs, depleting your microbiome and opening up the risk for dysbiosis or gut dysfunction. When I think about this, I just see it as an unnecessary risk. Flushing your system when it is so depleted is just asking for trouble in my ass. So this is one that you definitely wanna talk through with your doctor. 
And if they don't have a good answer, it might be a sign that you should potentially get another opinion. The next thing I would consider is leveraging both pre and probiotics, before and after, to help mitigate the potential risk. Prebiotics is the fiber-rich food that you eat that nourish and promote the good microbes to grow. Check out this video up here for more on that. And probiotics is a food or supplement that have beneficial microbes in them. This could be fermented foods such as sauerkraut or yogurt, or come in a little capsule form. And after a lot of research, I found what I think is a pretty good probiotic company. It's called Seed, seed.com, that bring a product to market that is clinically tested and they're just doing all the right things. So no affiliation here, but if you're interested, check them out. And that right there, that's what I got. Let me know what helpful tips or war stories you've had in the comments below. Keep on educating yourself, keep your doctors in the loop, and keep on owning your health. Peace.